Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's first session in our spring faculty webinar series, Show Me the Money, Finding Funding. My name is Megan Kowalski, and I am the Outreach and Reference Librarian for the Learning Resources Division. First, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, this is, again, our first in our fall or our spring series of webinars focused on research as it relates to funding and publication. Um, we hope you join us for all of our sessions, but we are particularly glad you are here with us today for the first session. This session is being recorded, and we will allow time for Q&A, both recorded and unrecorded, at the end. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat to start with, and I'll make sure they get answered either during the session or at the end. The recording will be posted on YouTube after we finish today's session. So show me the money. Finding is our funding is in a lot of places, and that can make it hard to find. Um, in this session, we're trying to make navigating the funding landscape a little bit easier. We can by no means cover all of the issues related to funding in today's uh, 30 minutes of content, but we are trying to help you um, by looking at what kind of funding options are out there, the tools that are available to you here at UDC, and some general tips for both finding funding and writing grants. If you are in a specialized field, say the sciences or the medicals or even the humanities, um, you will need to apply those skills you use, but today we're going to focus on the more general tips that help everyone. So there are a lot of funding options out there, and you're probably aware of most of them. And these are usually in the forms of grants or scholarships that you have to apply and qualify for. And there are several different kinds of grants that are out there. One of the big ones everyone is aware of is government grants. And this is any funding that comes from a local, state, or federal government organization or agency. You can qualify based on your geographic location, your institution, or the subject matter you work in. The the application process for government grants can be lengthy, and the requirements are usually rather particular to the agency providing the funding, but government money is readily available and out there for you to use. There are also corporate grants. These are grants that usually support an individual corporation's research and development goals. So for example, Gatorade could provide a grant, but they want you to study a product or something that makes their products look good. And so this money can be good, but you want to consider the alignment of your work with whatever the corporation sells, offers, or does. And so you want to pay particular attention when you're applying to these kind of grants to what kind of influence the corporation may have over your work and research. There are also private grants. These are usually private charities or organizations that are in some way mission driven. You will want your work to align with their mission and target population. There are also nonprofit grants. These tend to be smaller and like profit, uh, private grants, they are mission driven and likely target a specific population. Their funding tends to come from donors as opposed to an individual or organizational endowment. In all instances, these funding opportunities can go to individuals or be developed through collaborative alliances that fund grants at multiple institutions at the same time. So there are three main tools available to you at UDC, and we're going to go into all of them. Handed, it's a resource provided to you through the UDC library, and it is only available on campus. There is Pivot RP, which is provided by the Office of Sponsored Programs, and there is the author, Office of Sponsored Programs themselves. This is their purview. Make them your best friend. They specialize in grants, funding, and finding money for the research you want to do. So I'm going to drop the link for Candid into the chat here. Can't type and uh, talk at the same time. Um, Handed is provided through the UDC library, and UDC is a funding information network, or FIN, partner of Candid. The network is comprised of libraries, community foundations, NGOs, and nonprofit resource resource centers across the country. As a FIN partner, UDC provides free access to the most comprehensive information available on foundation and corporate giving. Candid started in 2019 when the Foundation Center and GuideStar joined forces, and every year millions of nonprofits spend trillions of dollars around the world, and Candid helps you find where the money comes from, 
where it goes, and why that matters. Through research and training opportunities, Candid helps connect people to that available funding. The main resource we provide at UDC is the Foundation Directory Online, or FDO. This is a database that is only available on campus. They used to offer during the pandemic off-campus access, but unfortunately they have now restricted us back to on-campus access only. So you don't have to come to the library. You can access this in your classroom or in your office, but you do have to be on campus. So I'm going to share some screenshots of how Candid works. If you'd like a one-on-one -on -one consultation working with Candid and the FDO, you can set up an appointment with the library where we can tailor a training session to your particular funding needs. So Candid opens with a recognizable search bar that you can use just as you would any other database. You can drop in your keywords, key terms, target audience, and click search and get started that way. But I recommend going straight to the advanced search options. Here you can use your keywords and apply things like pre-organized target audiences and subject matters and grant size, but you can also narrow down to specific things like geographical location, funding size, and things like that. Many of the search areas on that advanced search offer drop down menus where you can select main or subcategories to help you identify the information you need to find funding. Then on the results page, you get a list of grant makers or funders, grants themselves, recipients, and 990 tax forms. Here, having all three options can tell you who is giving the money, how they are giving it, what their requirements are, and who is receiving it. So you can actually see who is winning these grants. This lets you see what kind of funding is out there and which proposals are approved. You can also look at, the, look at the tax forms, which can be helpful in targeting funders by the size of the grants that they make. Within a specific grant funder profile, you can see what kind of material they fund, either by subject matter or kind of project, what geographic area they focus on, and how big their grants tend to be. You can also see their application and RFP process, their financial history, contact information, and communications options. You can also see a list of related funders you might want to check out as well. The information on this page changes depending on the size of the grant and the kind of work that they do. You, excuse me, you can download PDFs of grantmaker profiles, which you can take off campus and continue your work that way. I highly recommend using these to help, you know, narrow down what kind of grants you want to look at and then going directly to this grant funders website where you can even learn even more information about them. Candid itself offers training on the foundation directory online, and these training materials can be accessed online both on and off campus. They offer both free and paid training options. Some are live and some are recorded. Sessions include introduction to proposal writing, how to find grants, and more focused material on things like project budgets. They also offer a live chat so you can work directly with a representative from Candid to troubleshoot any issues with their service or just ask them questions about the FDO or other tools that they offer. And so as a final reminder, the Foundation Directory Online is only available on campus. Again, that is anywhere on campus. And if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one training session, you can do so through the library through our appointment system. Next, we're going to look at Pivot RP, and I'm going to, again, drop this uh, link in the chat. And Pivot RP is a tool provided by the Office of Sponsored Pro Programs that puts funding opportunities directly in front of you. So they find you, you don't have to go out and find them. You create an account by using your UDC email. You Complete the sign-up fields and click Submit. You can later edit these based on your needs and research interest changes. And once your account is validated and it doesn't take too long, this takes less than a day, you'll start receiving funding opportunities directly in your UDC email. And this is what one of those funding opportunities looks like. This is an image of a funding alert I received earlier this month. And you see the funder, their deadline, the amounts of money they have available, and a general summary of what they do. 
If you go ahead and click on the name of the funder, it'll take you to a page where you can learn more about them. And so this will include their website, the type of funder, their location, the amount of money they have available, application information, eligibility, and other information about this specific grant opportunity. Within Pivot RP itself, you can track grants and share information or find potential collaborators. Since this is a university-wide tool, you can see potential collaborators here at UDC. And when it comes to finding funding, there are general tips you can look at both using these tools and finding resource or finding funding elsewhere. And so when it comes to searching for funding, it helps to be expansive. So you want to keep an eye on your area of interest academic journals. They often put out calls for proposals or even offer funding themselves. You should consider being active on LinkedIn. This is a great way to not only stay on top of funding options, but find potential collaborators. So pay attention to the associations and professional groups in your area of interest. They often offer funding opportunities, either directly directly through them or through collaborations. And so you want to work that professional network of contacts that you've developed. This keeps you in the know about upcoming funding or existing proposals that you can collaborate on. Consider signing up for newsletters from organizations, government agencies, or anywhere else that is in your area of research. They almost always issue notice of funding opportunities along with the deadlines for those opportunities. You can also try Googling your topic or area of research, plus the phrase call for proposals or request for proposals. This is sort of a blunt force searching options, but at least you can find some stuff or at least start in the right direction of finding different areas where you could find funding. And finally, you could consider crowdfunding, and this is through sources like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. This is something new, but something you might want to consider when you are looking for funding for your research. And when you're doing funding for your research, you definitely want to stay in touch with uh, the Office of Sponsored Programs. And if you haven't already checked out the OSP website, I highly suggest you do so, because no matter how you try to find funding, you should work with this office. This is our university's office dedicated to help find and apply for and manage funding for scholarship and research. OSP offers training through online programs or in-person support. And OSP is also responsible for our Institutional Review Board, which you will likely be required to go through if you haven't done so already. So some final tips when it comes to finding funding. There are some general things to keep in mind. First, you want to identify your target. So that can be subject matter, a particular funder or agency, and the intended audience or goal you want your research to support. Pay attention to timelines. Be realistic about what you can ask for in the time you want or need to complete it. And also be realistic about submitting those proposals. You know, if you find a great scholar, you know, a great grant, but it's due in a week, you might not have enough time to put together a great proposal package. So just bookmark that for in the future when the next round of funding comes in. When it comes to finding funding, read, read, read. When you go through these call requests for proposals, Look at the requirements, both of you and of the project itself, any deadlines. Some of these have rolling deadlines. Some of these have multiple deadlines you have to meet. Consider the budget. Very rarely do funders say we're going to give you X and then expand that later. So always pay attention to budgets. Have a research plan. Funders want to know what you are going to do with their money. And then also look at the evaluation methods. How are they going to evaluate your proposal and all the other proposals being submitted? And finally, consider the outcomes. You want to make sure your outcomes speak to what that funder is giving you money for. Look at the final requirements. Um, you know, retain your rights where you can. In some instances, someone's going to give you funding, but you have to hand over. This is often the case with corporate funding. You have to hand over all of the work you've done. You don't get to keep it. So make sure that in the end, you're going to be okay with what you have to give up and what you have to keep. Go after grants of all sizes and from all kinds of funders, but make sure you're not, you know, crossing the stream and entering territory where some of your funders might not work well with one another. Some funders require you only to use funding from them and not from a variety of sources. So keep that in mind. Um, look for partnerships. Lots of funders like to see collaborations across different institutions and different groups. Remember, 
Um, when it comes to finding funding that funders want you to win. So they'll have sample grants, they'll have rubrics, they'll have tutorials. If any of that is available, go ahead and review that material before you submit your proposal or even develop it. So you know the proposal you are writing speaks to the funder. Give only what they ask for. Don't try to add any extra attachments to your proposal to you know, make yourself look better. This is not only more work for you, but it could actually hurt you. So resist the temptation to over explain in this instance, less is more. And finally, submit on time. No one funds a late proposal. So when it comes to the grant writing itself, the devil is in the details. So like any job resume or cover letter, customize your proposal. Funders want to know why you want their money and not someone else's. In your writing, speak to the goal or interests of the funder themselves. What will your work do for them? And finally, here, what problem will your work solve or help with? Focus on the solutions to that problem rather than the problem itself. Like we all know there are hungry children out there. So how is your research going to help solve the problem of hungry children? That's what they want you to focus on is solutions to the problems. So put the goal over the process itself. How you get to a solution matters, but the why is more important. There are many hows of how you go about solving a problem, so the why is the end goal here. When you write your proposal, tell a story and back it up with data if you have it. Align your research narrative to the funder's narrative. You want your story to match theirs because you're going to be joining along with them in solving something. And pay attention to who you are writing for. Who is reviewing these applications? Why should they pick your proposal over another one? Make them want you. And you can only do that by keeping the audience reviewing this proposal in mind. So do some legwork and try to find out who's actually reviewing your the proposals here. Is it someone within the organization? Is it an outside body? Is it scholars in your field? Figure out who you are talking to. Next, you want to explain who you are and establish your credibility. People don't want to give money to a stranger. They want to like you and see that you are like them and that you support the work that they want to see accomplished here. And then clearly lay out your research plan, your budget, and your timeline. Show that you are going to use the money you would be awarded in a responsible manner. Be specific. Vague ideas and proposals don't win funding. They want details. They want to see the nitty gritty stuff. Use the language of the funder in your proposal. So that includes things like specific topics or even specific vocabulary. Repeat the wording in the call for proposals or the application form. They wanna see that mirrored back at them. Format details matter, and this is particularly true for government grants. So make sure you have the right font, the right margin size, you know, the right font size, any attachments they request. You don't want to lose out on a funding opportunity because you left off required page numbers. And I have seen that happen before. And finally, edit. Edit more than once. Get an outside reviewer for both your content and the mechanics within your proposal. Make sure that the person reviewing this and helping you edit knows the details of the proposal so that they can catch any errors you might otherwise have missed. And here are some resources to help you stay abreast of what's going on in the world of funding. So grants.gov is a huge government funding database um, that basically lists or tries to list all the federal funding out there that is available. And the Open Educational Database Funders list is right now a list of about 100 places to find funding your, for your research. And they do try to keep that list updated. So keep an eye on that. And so we've now come to the end of the content, but before we get to q and I, I do want to say, again, please don't hesitate to contact the library. We are available through email, through our online chat, through appointments, both in person and online, and we are available for in-person drop-in at the reference desk. So if you come to the library and want to know more about, you know, finding funding or using the foundation directory online, we're here to help you do that. So now I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, please feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute yourself, and I will give time for unrecorded questions at the end for those who prefer that. While we wait for those to come in, I am dropping an assessment form for this recording. 
or for this session in the chat. We would love to get your feedback on this. And the recording will be made available um, through our YouTube uh, probably within an hour or so. Not seeing any questions come in. So I do want to thank you for joining us today. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.